Hello, welcome to Moraine City First Church of God. We are having Beyond the Pulpit, and this is a special, I don't know, we're not on television really, but this is a special edition for us for sure, because we're in the kitchen of the church, and uh, we're going to make some, well, we're just going to make some good food. It's called gumbo. It's from Louisiana. It's a great recipe that my wife has uh, not only learned, but she's She's made it perfect now. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to eat, so I'm glad we're making it because I get to eat the, the, the benefits of it. I want you to stick with us this evening because we're going to be doing some Bible study, Bible trivia, but also, of course, we're going to make this gumbo. And uh, well, let's start off with a word of prayer, and then we're going to get right into the cooking. Uh, give you just a few minutes to be able to, some people I know is wanting to get online to be able to do this. If you haven't got the ingredients, we have posted them earlier on this week. Uh, so you need to scroll down and try to find the ingredients there for you. Uh, you can find the, um, all everything she's going to be making in it, and, and, and then she can kind of give you some extra ingredients that we use and different things we do. But uh, I say we. I eat, she cooks. That makes it we. So I, I, well, I get the benefits of it all. But uh, let's start with a word of prayer, and then we're just going to get right into the cooking. Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening, and God, we know we live in perilous times as far as the situations that's going on, but God, we see the light at the end of the tunnel because we know that you're in control of all things. What a blessing you are to us, Father, how you've blessed each and every day that we live, how you've protected us, you've watched over us, and Lord, you've always provided our every need and then so much more. We ask, God, that you might bless this evening, that you might help us to draw closer to you and just enjoy our time together. Uh, everyone that's watching, God, we just send a blessing their way. Ask the Lord that you just might be with them tonight and help them to just relax and enjoy the, the uh, what's going to happen, Lord. And hopefully they'll get some good food out of this. Lord, we just ask that you watch every over every family, everyone that's watching. We thank you, Father, for everything you do. In Jesus' name, amen. So, as you know, my name is Donald Curtis. I'm the pastor of Moraine City First Church of God here in Dayton, Ohio. And this is my beautiful wife, and she's going to do the cooking this evening and show you. And so this is completely, I just got to warn you, uh, but I'm so proud of her because this is completely out of the box for her. Uh, not only uh, I've put her in different roles that she uh, is not used to, to say the least, but uh, this is one that she's going to show how to, she's going to do this gumbo. And I hope you watch. And if you need some help later on, if you want to message us or text us or, or private message us after this is over, and you got some questions, don't hesitate. Make sure you do that, and we'll try to help you as much as we can. Throughout the evening, I'm going to try to monitor on my phone a little bit because we're in the kitchen. It's a little bit different environment. I'm going to kind of try to monitor a little bit of some of the things you uh, say and do, and if you've got questions during the time we're doing this, maybe you can ask then. I'll be glad to try to respond if I can see it. If I don't see it, I'll, I won't respond. And Lisa's over here watching too, so hopefully between the two of us, we'll be able to get, see you. So... Without further ado, I'm going to enter my, introduce my wife, Denise, and she's going to go, to go to work. Okay, good evening. So first of all, we are going to saute our green peppers. If you had a green pepper, you cut it up as small as you want, as big as you want. Um, and green peppers and our onions, our green onions, I only use the green part of the onion. You can use the whole onion if you want. I'm not a big onion fan, but I just use the green part of it. I'm going to put a little oil in my skillet. I just use the vegetable oil, the cheap, great value brand. And then I'm going to put my peppers and my onions right in the pot or the skillet. And then just take my spoon. This stove is different for me, so y'all just going to have to kind of bear with me. I want to make sure... Oh, I think that's the wrong burner. Yep. So then you just saute your onions and peppers. If you're doing this at home, just kind of get them nice and nope, that's wrong. Nice and soft is kind of what we're doing. Sometimes they turn like a little bit um, black on there, but that's okay. It doesn't hurt them whatsoever. Sometimes my kids look in the pot and they're like, what's that black stuff floating around? But it just it just gives it flavor, so it's okay. So I'm going to saute my onions and peppers. Hopefully this is getting, That's yeah, good. it's getting hot. So just kind of move it around and get it good and hot and good and soft. 
And you can put, um, the recipe calls for, I'm sorry, the recipe calls for two bunches of green onions and two bell peppers. I only use one. So if you have, if you want to use more, that's completely up to you. I've kind of tweaked the recipe. And also I wanted to say this is a um, recipe is from my good friend, Karen Nugent. She lives in Louisiana. She would came to Kentucky. And when we were working with Lifeline and her husband helped lay the floor in our office building. And so she was in the house cooking us um, lunch and she made this gumbo and we absolutely loved it. So um, one day I emailed her and I was like, can you please send me that recipe? I'm going to try to see if I can do that. And so she sent the recipe and made it very easy for me to follow and we loved it. And of course, you know, after a little while you kind of tweak it and do your own thing to it and you can add more than what we've actually got here or you can do less. Some people don't like shrimp. You don't have to put shrimp in it. You can put steak or um, any other type of meat maybe that you would like. Sorry, this is taking longer than I thought it would at home. It seems like it, it goes a lot faster. So you just, but this has got to be good and soft or it's just not that great. So you got to make sure this is good and sauteed. Um, and if y'all have any questions while we're doing this, please feel free to comment. And um, hopefully this is going to be getting hot. <laughs> Maybe I should have had the oil on already. But we, I, I'm going to let that uh, just continue to cook. That's what it looks like you can sit at home. Yeah, it just needs to get soft. This is what in your pot. It's just the green peppers, the onions, and the oil. And, and the it peppers and onions, you, I know you can't see up there, but I mean it's really smelling good just because of the odor and the fragrance of all of it. And like I said, it's just an extra seasoning, no, but it, it's getting hot. And um, so now what we can do, as you can tell, I've already cut up um, my smoked sausage. I just get the, from Walmart, the Eckridge um, smoked sausage, and I just cut it up in little um, chunks. And then I, I get the cooked shrimp. It's peeled, deveined, and the tail's off. I just get the extra small one bag, and then I have this in my um, bow here. And then I use chunk chicken, like the cans of chunk chicken. So much easier. I use two of these, and it's just the Great Value brand from Walmart. And the but more if you, chicken the meat, the better for me. <laughs> if you want, you can like actually, you know, just get the chicken breast and cut them up and cook them ahead of time, and use those also. I just like the. We just really like the um, chunk chicken. And so I have my meat, and then also our chicken broth, and I just. I get the generic. It's always cheaper to do generic, and it tastes just as good. And so um, I am going to pour this in my pot. And I get two of them. I think the recipe actually calls for three to four cups. I just do two of these um, boxes of chicken broth. It is 32 ounces, and I do two of them. And then I also, I don't think the recipe calls for water, but I just add some water to mine. Not a lot, just a little water. Give it a little extra soupy, I guess. I've just always added water to it. So I'm just going to do about half of this water bottle just to give it some extra water or extra uh, soupy stuff. And then I'm going to turn this one on and just be letting it like get hot. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put all my meat into the chicken broth. So you just pour your smoked sausage in. And we then use smoked sausage. You can use about any kind of sausage you like as far as there's all kinds of Cajun sausage, different things. Anything that's got lots of flavor is the best though. And then, you're right. then I'm going to put my, um, cook my shrimp in next. And then I'm going to add my chicken. Like I said, we do two cans of the chicken, and I'll add that right to the pot, and then just kind of stir, let it stir up some, and just be kind of getting, um, just getting it warm while we are getting everything else done. And so, after that, it looks like this. So I just juice the water, all the meat. Yeah. 
And then, okay, let me back over there. I have to get this done because next, um, we, I have to fix something. It's called Rue, and it's like, it's a Cajun, um, it's a Cajun word. <laughs> but I mean, it's a it's a mixture that you make. It's kind of like gravy. So I really need this to get done quickly. So I think it's about ready to put in my pot. And um, I'm going to switch my skillet. I don't know if I can set this one. We set this in the back. I'll move that back there. Leave it on. I'm going to move my... Um, it usually doesn't take this long for me to salt tape. No, it ain't going to work. Like I said, this stove... I've never cooked on this stove. It's the first time ever. Maybe I should have practiced them. I don't need that on there. And now I'm going to fix the roux. You can actually buy this, but um, it's just as easy to fix it. Is that still on? Mm -hmm. Just let that keep getting hot. So with the roux, all you need is, I, it says a fourth of a cup if you, I don't know if the recipe was online, but I use half a cup of oil and just pour that in your pan, in your skillet. And then a, so if I use half a cup of oil, then I use half a cup of flour and I'm pouring that right in my skillet and I just use the self-rising flour and the vegetable oil. And then you're going to add salt and pepper, just as much as you want. If you want it more peppery or, or less, it's up to you. And then plenty of salt always, you know, salt's always good. And then I, you use your, um, it's called Original Creole Seasoning. And it's just in this big green can. It's real easy to find at Walmart. And this is what, you know, just really makes it gumbo, <laughs> is adding this. And you can add as much of this as you want. It's spicy, but Donald loves it spicy, so I always add plenty of the, Creole seasoning to that and then you just do it like gravy you just start mixing it I don't know if you can see inside but you just mix it up until it gets like a golden brown you want it to be a golden brown can you keep stirring those mm -hmm. and um don't Thank let it burn you. thanks Richie I look cute in my apron they say uh, so you just keep doing this um this mixture is that's great and just keep stirring. You can see how it's turning like a golden brown. I've got an onion in there. So you just keep stirring, 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 stirring. And some people like it darker. They like the roux darker. But we just like ours a like golden brown. And that's the way she taught me how to do it. And that's the way we love it. So you can do it a lot like with gravy. If you make gravy, some people like white gravy. Some people like it dark. And some people like it brown. So this is just going to be a good golden brown. Is that done? Pretty close. Okay. It's not Keep done, it though. It's not done. Let me put it back over here. So when I get this roux done, I'm going to add it to my pot of soup that's already on, getting hot. Because your roux has to, um, after you get it um, browned, you have to put it in your pot and you have to let it dissolve, and it just kind of gives it a really good texture and a good taste also so I just I'm almost done with the roux and I want to put them back over here so I'm going to take my roux mixture is this which way see how it's just kind of like a little bit of a gravy looking mixture and mine's just a light brown but if you want to do it darker you're you can do that it's up to you and I'm going to add this to my um, pot of chicken broth and my meat. Okay, I just got that. Just add it right to the pot. Will you set that over there? And then just and just stir. Just stir it in there, and then it'll as it's cooking, and um, that roux will just dissolve in there and just give it a really good flavor. Okay, I have never had this much trouble sautéing vegetables. But for some reason, they're just not, um, they're not getting as done. I, I like for them to get, a, just some of them just get a little bit with a little bit of the black on it. I mean, I guess it doesn't have to be, but I just like it that way. The softer, the better for me, because I don't like to crunch into them. I'm just not a, I don't, I don't like green peppers and onions that much anyway, and so I want them to be soft. 
And the green peppers and onions, though, are not a really, after you saute them and then put them in all the, all the other sauces and the flavors, it doesn't really give a strong odor or a strong taste. No, it doesn't. So it doesn't taste like a green pepper onion as much as you would if you just bite into one. Because you might say, I don't like green peppers and onions. I don't either. And this just, it's just a really good flavoring. It just gives I it a good taste. I would try it this way before you try to alter it. Yeah. So. And it's almost done, so I'm about ready to um, be able to add it to my pot. It's, this is just really simple, and like you say, you can just kind of tweak it and make it your own, uh, your own and um, add more or take away however you want to do it. Because I know there's people that have like shrimp allergies and they wouldn't be able to use shrimp, but you can, you can find something else to um, take the place of that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add my vegetables. There's a few pieces that's darker in there. So I'm going to add them to my pot. Just pour them right in. And then I'm going to add And then we're just going to stir this up really good. Is that a big, is that on high? So just um, stir this up and this kind of, oh, I forgot the season. So then you're going to, to your pot, you're going to add salt. Just as much as you want. Don't tell me I'm adding too much. I just add a bunch of salt <laughs> and pepper. I like salt and pepper. They just, it just helps the taste of it. So I have plenty of salt and pepper, but you can put as much as you want. And then this absolutely add your Creole seasoning to your pot. And like I said, I add a lot because Donald loves it. Love it, love it, He likes love it, it spicy. Sometimes it will actually make your nose run and your eyes water, but he loves it spicy. And if so, you don't like it real spicy, yes, just use less of the Don't put as much. Creole. Don't put as much, just like with anything else that you But that's cook. what really gives a lot of flavor and texture to it, and it's really good. So now I don't know if you can see in my pot. I can't get my, I mean, my vegetables are in my meat are all not my vegetables, my onions and peppers. And then the meat, you can just see them, they're all in there. And you just get that hot, bring it to a bowl. I'll just kind of bring it to a bowl. And then once that is boiling, you turn it on simmer and cook it for um, 15 to 20 minutes. Just let it simmer and... That will thicken it up. Yeah, it? so then the next thing we're gonna do is our rice. Rice is what makes gumbo really good too. Show them what kind of use. I use the minute white rice. It's very, we love it, it's very good, and I just, you just follow the recipe right on the box. So I'm gonna do four cups. So I need two cups of rice and two cups of water. So, sorry. Also, you can adjust according to your family size. Yeah, if you don't want, we love rice, so, so I got two cups of rice. I need the water first. And, Water, sorry. Two cups of rice and two cups of water. I knew that. You might have to get me some more water. Okay. It's in the refrigerator. I don't know if I have enough for two cups. Well, this is a different measuring. Oh, no, it's just one. Okay. And so two cups of water, which, I mean, this tells you on the box how much rice. Of water and then you're going to I have to look I know how to make it but I don't want to do it wrong because I'm a little nervous so I'm going to boil my water so just pour your water in let it boil and then of course you'll put your rice in stir it up let it sit for five minutes and you will have gumbo and you of course when you're finished with everything your rice goes in your bow first and then your soup and your meat and stuff goes over top of it and it's really, Steve really Adams good. Steve Adams asked, how many will this serve? Typically? This will serve, let me see what she tells me. Uh, I guess I could wear my glasses so I can see. Um, at our house, it doesn't serve many because Donald eats so much of it. But probably... It depends on how many bowls you want to eat, yeah. it, Steve. That depends on how many people want you to You can get double it. the recipe, too, and that would help you. But I, probably about four people. I think we probably get to pay four, four to six, four to six bows out of it. The rice really helps too because that you know it makes you more filling. Darlene, you asked, uh, can you use rice cauliflower to cut down on the carbs? I do not know that. You can try. I'm it. sure you can. If you use it for other recipes, yeah. I'm sure to work on this because all the rice is is your base, and then you take the the 
other stuff yeah, and you put it over rice. the rice. And so I'm sure that you can use the whatever kind of rice you typically use. Okay, my water's Gina starting said, to boil and, Gina, I, and my rice. Gina Delph said, R relax, you're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> and you just every now and then just kind of stir your gumbo as it's, you know, it, this is coming to a boil. Um, and then once you actually let it simmer, you don't even, you can just let it sit there and simmer and go read a book or get on Facebook and watch us. <laughs> While they're simmering, I'm gonna, we're going to do a little Bible devotion. My wife um, picked out the verses this evening. And it's um, in Psalms, um, Psalm 34, verse 8. It says, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Now, don't get excited. That means man and woman. That includes <laughs> everybody. That's just the way it's written. But just taste and see the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Denise? You had some thoughts on this. And as I was thinking about doing this, cooking and stuff, to, um, and trying to figure out, you know, how I would do it and get all my stuff ready, I was laying in the bed, and I can't fall asleep really quick. And the Lord gave me this verse, and, of course, it was really cool because it goes right with the cooking. And, um, and I was just thinking about how that, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And um, another word you could say is experience. You know, like if we experience that God is good. Yeah. Um, and so... There's a lot of things that we taste, right? There's a lot of experiences. There's things that we um, try out to see if we'll like it. And so this is kind of saying, you know, try out the Lord and see if you will like him. And, of course, if you do try him out, you're going to like him. You're going to love him because he is so good. And you know that um, you can trust him and um, he keeps his word. He keeps his promises. So I was thinking also about, like, when we try something that maybe um, is um, not the real thing. Just say that you love Coke, like you are a Coke drinker, and you love Coke. And then somebody gives you like a generic or a flat-tasting drink and, and tells you it's Coke. Well, you know right off that it's not. It's right. Coke lover. You know that's not the real thing. And um, I was just thinking, you know, that's the way it is with the Lord. I mean, he is the real thing. He's Amen. not. Um, he's not fake. He's not generic. If you taste him and you see how good he is, and how wonderful he is, and how he loves us so much, then nothing else will ever, ever satisfy you. Amen. He will be the only thing that will ever satisfy you completely. And that's wrong with so many people nowadays. They're trying everything to satisfy, that longing for something bigger and better than them. And drugs is not going to do it. Alcohol is not going to do it. All, I mean, we can list a lot of things. Money, success. That's not going to do it. But if you... Have Jesus, and you serve Him, and you live for Him, and you taste it of how good He is. Yeah. Then you're not going to want anything else. Amen. And that's just kind of the, some of the thoughts that the Lord gave me. I was getting as she was getting all this prepared and ready, and and my wife is um, she's come a long way out of her box. In fact, she's <laughs> she's so far out of the box she threw the box away, uh, and I'm proud of her for doing that because it takes a lot of guts and a lot of things, you know, to get in front of people and to do this. And I appreciate her being willing to do that. But, you know, she brought this scripture, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And I began to think about also of all the ingredients that she just put in this pot. Uh, if you'll take any of these ingredients, I would take rice alone and just try to eat it like it is. It's not good. If I take the vegetable oil, I can promise you it would not taste good. If I take the flour, this stuff, this Creole sauce that's their seasoning that she puts in there, if I just turned that up and started drinking it, it would be awful. And that's kind of how the world kind of does. They, they want to take bits and pieces of the world and just say, you know, how that it's just a little here and a little there. It's okay. It's not the same. God is saying is he's putting all the stuff, all the right ingredients in your life. And when he's done, it simmers for a while, just like this is doing right now. And it just kind of comes to a, a wonderful aroma, aroma in your life. And it, it becomes a wonderful time where God really does some miracles in you. You know, when he's, we're putting in the ingredients, you're thinking, what in the world is going on? And I watch and I think, how in the world me? could that turn out good? Could you even hear me? And God sometimes is allowing things to happen in our lives. 
And we think, how is this helping me? How is this experience that I'm going through, this even sometimes a difficult experience, how in the world can it help me? But as we get through the experience and we, he gets all the ingredients in the right places with the right portions, and it, when it's good times or bad times, when it was sad times or happy times, it doesn't matter. When he all puts it all together, can I tell you something? It all comes out right. And man, when you taste the Lord like that and you trust God, I am telling you, it'll taste better than even her gumbo right now. I don't know. It's going to be pretty good. I love. I was so excited when she started making this gumbo or thought about it. And I, I said, the first thing when we started doing this idea, I said, you got to make the gumbo. <laughs> really, so you can see it, but also so I can eat it. That's really what I want to do. So this taste the Lord. You are there watching, and I hope you are, and you're interested in the cooking and what's going on here. And I hope you pray that it turns out right for you like it does, has us. But Sometimes I asked my wife a years ago when we first got married, I asked her, I said, Denise, I said, I'll buy you 50 pounds of flour <laughs> if you would just learn how to make good biscuits, you know, because my mom and made biscuits and gravy scratch, you know, and man, it was so good. We're just used to it. And 50 pounds of flour, and you could make that, and I mean, you could learn that. It'd be great. Well, sometimes... It might be hot. Let me get it. Sometimes we can try and try. Is it hot? No. Okay. Can you see? It's, it's kind of like a, like a little foam to the top. Yeah, the foam right at now. the top, that's just the, the roux. But it's not real dark. It's a light soup. And then my rice is sitting over here. Of course, it has to sit there for five minutes. And then... We are going to put this on simmer. If you have it, oh, that burned. If you have it um, boiling really good, then make sure you turn it on simmer. So let me find simmer on this stove. Is that the right one? Is that the front? This one? This one? <sighs> I'm sorry, guys. So just turn your um, burner to simmer and we, almost almost off, just yeah. on very low. And just let it, you don't have to cover it, just let it simmer um, for about 15, 20 minutes. And even now, you can smell all that Creole seasoning, <laughs> and it smells really good. And I'm sorry, my battery wasn't even on a while ago, so hopefully y'all could hear what I said. Okay. <laughs> so the simmer now, but you know, some of you that's sitting here, you're watching and you're listening, and I want you to just taste the Lord tonight. Yes. I want you to just take in God's Spirit. Let Him just fill you up. And let me tell you something. His, his food, His food from the Word, yeah. the bread of life, means more than that Creole. It does. Yeah. I'm telling you, more than all the gumbo you can put in your body. And I always add extra. But Creole. this <laughs> wonderful bread of life is a blessing that As everyone can do. Little so, extra Creole. We wanted to do something, they, and they almost told me not to, but I wanted to do a trivia this evening, and I've got a, a Esther Price box of chocolates. Extra Esther Price box of chocolates. So I'm going to do a, tri uh, uh, a Bible trivia, Bible trivia, and I want you to listen very close. The first one that we see on that is the one's going to get it. Ready? <laughs> what material was used for the temple's altar? What material was used for the temple's altar? You go online. If you get, to, we're on Facebook now. We're watching by Facebook. So if you don't get it by Facebook, we're not going to see it until later. She said, Darlene Reffitt asked, "Did she learn to make biscuits? Doing a great job. I tell you what." No. When we first got <laughs> married, Darlene, she couldn't boil water. Bless really her heart. Funny. I know. I'm telling the whole world. But as she couldn't boil water, now she's a very good cook. In fact, you can tell just a little bit because of all the weight I've gained in the last several years. So and honestly, I'm very thankful. To be, to be honest, I don't like homemade biscuits. I like skin biscuits. I know people are going to say, really? But that's just how I've always been. My mom would make them. I would much rather have a biscuit can. Like the grand biscuits and then just add my gravy. I can fix gravy. <laughs> but I just never, 
really cared for homemade biscuits. I, they just always seemed too much flour. Or, I don't know. I just like the canned biscuits. So I didn't <laughs> ever learn to fix biscuits. <laughs> so it's simmered. So has anybody got, we got the question for this evening? Have you put it up, Lisa? Yes, it's up. All right. So make sure you write in if you know the answer, what it was made out of. Cedar is not the right answer. Uh, Chittam wood is not the right answer as well. It's not the one that we're looking for. That's it was. Not. There we go. Uh, I take it back. You had it. You got it right. It was Chittam wood, and it was overlaid with brass, and that was the right answer. It was Sister oh, Willa. Willa. Good job, Willa. Yep, that's right. I didn't read all the way down, Sister Willa. Sorry about that. And also, I was just going to say, somebody did make sure that I got a box of this candy, so. Yeah. <laughs> Debbie so, Gardner, she's a sweetheart, so, so she made she, sure. She got her candy the other night. <laughs> so, Sister Willa, you got it first, the first one I've seen, and I'll read for you just to make sure. But you will get the box of chocolates. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm glad for you. Now. Are we about ready to eat? It's got to simmer for about 15 minutes, so. A little longer. It'll be, yeah. I mean, I can, I can dip them out and show you guys what it looks like. Yeah. But it just. Just give them a little bit of look. Yeah. Let's get a little. I'll use. Sorry. <laughs> I'm getting hungry smelling this food. Like, like I said, this kitchen is new to me. And, but, I'm gonna, oh, I forgot to put the rice in first. Mm. You can put the rice in second, first, it don't matter. <laughs> Either way, it's going to be good. Oh, I mix it all up once it's yeah, in Yeah, we there. Just, just mix it up anyway. So, so you put your, um, can you see it? So I have... Of course, all your meats in here, your soup, and then your rice is just mixed. And I promise it is really so good. Because when I first seen this, and she was cooking it in my house, I was like, "Ooh, that looks kind of scary." <laughs> but when I actually ate some of it, it is really good. So I knew it's I had delicious. to learn how to cook it. It is absolutely delicious. If you and I did make this before, and I shared it with um, Barry Vaughn and Shelby and Lisa. And you know that Barry is like a really good cook. And he loved it, so, you know, that made me feel good. <laughs> so hopefully you all like it, if you're fixing it. I know Hannah, my daughter's cooking it, and Mike Glander said he was going to, and I don't know if Barry anybody Vaughan else. Barry and Shelby and all them's together, they said they're going oh, to be they're cooking, cooking it. Oh, they're cooking it? All right. So. We hope yours is as successful as ours. Now, you can put as much rice as you want, as yeah. much juice as you want. You can alter how much you put in each. You can do a little, you know, kind of what your taste buds like. And so it all But I'm going to put this back in here, guys, just to get it, um, let it simmer some, so it'll be good. And yeah, because I like it getting Because really you want good your done. shrimp to definitely get, um, you know, get done. Because <laughs> usually you use the shrimp and it's the frozen shrimp. So you just make sure you let that simmer and then you'll be good to go. Happy you've, eating. <laughs> if you've got any questions, if you've got any uh, suggestions or, or something you've tried, or maybe later on that you try this and like for us to, you know, say, hey, I tried it, it worked great, or you tried it and it didn't work so great. Maybe we can help you figure out what that is. <laughs> Let us know. We'd love to hear from you. And listen, if you're watching this evening, and hopefully you are, uh, there we see, I've seen a whole bunch of people online now. But if you're watching, we want you to just like us, uh, follow us, uh, share us. Please share us and with all your friends. If you could invite all your friends and just like us, uh, that would be great. Because that way help, we help get the message out even more. Of course, you know, many of you watching, is we're do, on Wednesday nights, we're doing a Bible study with uh, usually some guests and things. We'll study the Bible even more than we did this evening. Uh, and we don't do cooking on Wednesday night, but no. <laughs> we do a lot of other good things and Bible trivia and things. It's really a good, we hear testimonies from some of the folks here in the church and different people in our community. It is really a blessing to hear that. So we want you to be a part of that. Sunday morning, we're going to have a service online, YouTube and Facebook. Um, we hope you come. It's 1030 in the morning. So that's when we're going to be here online this Sunday morning. Last Sunday morning, it was amazing. We had mm -hmm. an Easter Sunday morning, and I tell you, we had we had over 80 people in the car in, in, the, parking in the parking lot, 
and their cars. They were safe distance and all that stuff. Don't be writing to me and tell me we're not, you know, breaking the rules. We're, we're doing the best we can to keep our distance, but we had an outstanding service. The Lord came down. I tell you, people were blessed. I was blessed. It was just good to be together in the house of the Lord or beside the house of the Lord. <laughs> and we were just excited about all that. And then people were just blessed. People I didn't even know and we had never attended this church came that, that Sunday morning. Donald course, has more fun preaching to faces than just empty pews. Yeah, so yeah, that, that's it really sure. encouraged him too. <laughs> it's encouraging to see folks and to be able to see him actually preach to somebody instead of a camera. Yeah. So <laughs> it kind of Kind of difficult sometimes, but we're thankful for everybody that came in. Hopefully, you'll be watching on Sunday morning, and then Sunday night we'll have a uh, regular service at 6 o'clock. We've been doing some archive services. I'd be honest with you, some of these archive services were, and we're handpicking these because they are ones where God really, really blessed in our, in our congregation. Uh, most of the time, they ended up in all the altar full. And uh, God just moving in a special way. So we want you to pay attention to that too. Um, we hope and pray that you do. I'm going to get back to the scripture, if you don't mind, just for a second. It says, okay. taste and see that the Lord is good. Can I tell you something? Uh, you know, when we taste food, we just taste it and we kind of, we, we, we take it in and our taste buds lets us know whether we're, it's good or not. When we taste the Lord, he says, he, you, we are going to see. Isn't that strange that he uses taste and see? You know, when you taste it, I can see what I'm about ready to eat. The food, he's talking about tasting it, and you're going to see the goodness of Amen. God developed in your life. Yes. When you taste the Lord, in other words, tasting means that you're bringing him inside of you. He becomes a part of you. When I taste this food, it becomes a part of who I am. It gives me nourishment. It gives me strength. It gives me the ability to get up in the morning and to get, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to do my job during the day. Well, that's the, exactly the way the Lord works. He tastes, we, if we taste him, in other words, if we'll take him in, if we'll experience him, like Denise said, then I promise you, will bless you more more than you could ever imagine some of you sitting there maybe don't even realize uh, how good God is but I'm telling you right now God is good and he wants to help you the whole world might have turned their back on you but God is good yes, amen. and when you experience tr the true God it's Religion. There's a lot of people experiencing just going to church. They're experiencing groups. They're experiencing just being inspired by a speaker. I'm not. That's not what I'm talking about. That might be part of it, but that's not what I'm talking about. My, what I'm talking about is when you're when you're quarantined <laughs> in your house and you can't get out and you're alone, but yet God comes down and is with you. That's what I'm talking about. When you're alone and you're in your closet and you're praying to the Heavenly Father and His Spirit comes down on you and fills you up, that's what I'm talking about. Yes. What I'm saying is there's something sweet about the Spirit of God moving in your body, in your spirit, in your soul. That's why it says, how in the world can a big God that created all the universe fit in my heart? Well, I tell you what, <laughs> He's a wonder. But he is fitting right here. He loves us so much. So I want you to taste the Lord. And the reason I want is not just so you can, you can always get a blessing. But we do get many blessings. But he says, taste the Lord and see that he is good. Can I ask you this? I love to ask questions to make you think a little bit. I do this to our congregation all the time. They probably don't like it more than you, maybe. But, <laughs> but I, I, I like to ask the question, do you see the hand of God in your life? I'm not asking you if you go to church. I'm not asking you if you're a good person. I'm not asking you, you know, if you, you're, you're faithful to give your tithes and offerings. That's, not, that's part of it. But what I'm really asking is, do you see the hand of God manifested in your daily life? Do you feel the presence of God in your life? Because if you don't see God's hand manifested, and if you don't feel the presence of God in your life, 
I'm afraid that maybe one, you've moved away from God, or two, that you've never had God in the first place. Mm -hmm. You see, when you taste, you're going to see something. He didn't say taste and you might see something. He says, taste the Lord that, t excuse me, oh, taste and see. It's automatic. <laughs> if you really get God in your life and your heart, then you're going to see the hand of God move in your life. Amen. You see, you have a blessing on you. There's a hedge about you. Angels that protect you. God's Spirit is manifested in you, and you are able to feel and sense the presence of a holy God. I, I want you to just, as you taste this great recipe of gumbo, and I promise you, I love it, as I've told you 25 times already, <laughs> but I want you to taste even more than the gumbo. I want you to taste the Lord, Amen. for He is good. And he's good all the time. That's right. And, you know, it says, blessed is the man that trusteth him. Yes. You know, and I think that's where a lot of people have a problem is that, well, they trust a lot of things, but don't trust the Lord. Let me, let me give you an example. My wife spoke about when we first got the recipe. Uh, you didn't much believe it, did you? I mean, you've yeah. seen all those things. I mean, I'd like it. <laughs> and you thought it would not, you don't know. You know, my kids used to do that all the time. They'd get in front of something. I'd say, hey, let's try this. And Hannah, my oldest daughter, she would try anything. <laughs> and I don't know what she just tried because I told her to or she just curious or what, but she would try about anything. I remember one time we was at a Chinese restaurant and we was eating. I said, try these. They're really good. And it was frog legs. I didn't tell her there was frog legs. <laughs> if I said these are frog legs, she would have curled her she nose up and frogs. ran for the She's door. <laughs> but she ate it and it was good. <laughs> Tried rabbit. She didn't know. It was good. Natalie, on the other hand, my younger daughter, <laughs> I could say, try this. And if it didn't look, look good. good, it ain't going in her mouth. I don't care what happened, what was <laughs> going on, or how much I thought it was good, how much we talked to her. It didn't happen. Can I tell you something? <laughs> Natalie's daughter missed a lot of blessings in food but she didn't taste <laughs> they, well I don't like it I don't have time for it or it doesn't look like something I want to do or is it not I don't I don't want to put myself out for that you're missing a lot of blessings if you'll taste the Lord and you'll trust God trust him, and you love live for him I promise you you're gonna it's the best thing that ever happened to you. He's the best thing you're ever you can ever He's ever come into your world. He's the best thing that ever leads you and guide you. He is all in all. He's that and then some. He is God. Jehovah. Like, like I think it was the Coke commercial said this is the real thing, baby. Well, that's what God is. The He's real the thing. <laughs> that's right. He has been proven over and over and over again. Yeah. My my hand We're ready watching. to eat. Wished you guys was here to try it. Maybe sometime for a church dinner, I'll fix some. <laughs> it's simmering. It looks good. Let's show them one more time just because it is it hot. Nope. I'm all, I don't want my hands to be burned. So it just looks like, it just looks like it's. Uh, I'm grabbing a bow. A big, nice bow. Uh, uh, you can see. And I can't hold it up there and do it. Actually, can you see? But you can see some of the, some of the, the uh, chicken and the sausage and the greens shrimp. and the shrimp and all that just marinating in this nice roux and this and the and the chicken bouillon or the chicken um, broth broth rather and man all that's coming together and it's just steaming your whole house be filled with a wonderful smell I'm telling you right now <laughs> we think it smells good like I said Natalie not so much she's like what is that smell when I'm cooking it. <laughs> So you put your rice in. I'm going to go ahead and give Donald some. He can try it if it's not too hot. Put your rice in the bottom of your bowl, just like this. Nothing to it. And then just... Swamp it with that. Dip, Good stuff. Dip your soup out <laughs> and just add to this. And then you can tell your family it came straight from Louisiana. Yep, this is Louisiana gumbo. Louisiana's there you go. best. 
It well, is really good. Check that out. He needs to wait and but take a bite too. <laughs> Check that out. It's steamy hot, but boy, that stuff is good. And here, what we do at home is we'll make a big pot of rice and a whole big pot of this. And that way, you know how you do chili and after every day, it kind of you gets better. warm it up and get better. <laughs> That's exactly how the gumbo does. It gets a little thicker and richer and the flavors come out more. And so every day it just seems like it gets better and better and better. Yeah. But I love this stuff. It, you can't, it does. You can refrigerate it and it keeps really good. Like some stuff you refrigerate and it tastes nasty. This is warm it right back up and put your rice in there. In fact, it's, it's better than it was when you first made it's it. It's very good. It looks awful it's hot. It's really hot. <laughs> you probably better wait. Go ahead and just eat it. Mmm. <laughs> Spicy. <laughs> That's right on the money. <laughs> it's a little warm, but that is good. We hope and pray that you enjoyed this wonderful time. We've enjoyed it. I tell you, it's been good for us, other than my wife having to deal with the, the, the stove a little bit yeah. more than usual. But uh, we've enjoyed it. We hope you have. Please come back on s a Sunday morning, 1030. We're going to have a service, and uh, I'm sure it would be a great uh, uh, message of hope for you. Uh, hope and pray that you come back at 1030. Watch us on Facebook. Again, like us. And uh, we would love to have you to invite other friends and things. Tag them into it. Get them involved. We appreciate you. Hope and pray that you're going to come. Heavenly Father, we are so very thankful that you love us, God, and that you help us and you give us the strength to do whatever it is that you would ask of us, Lord, and we just appreciate your help tonight. Yes. We pray that you would bless each one that's watching. We don't know what maybe they're going through, if they're suffering, if they're sick, if there's um, just some issues, God, they're facing. You know all about them, and you can take care of everything and anything, God. There's nothing too hard or too Amen. small or too little or too big for you. And we're so thankful that we serve that kind of a God. And we just thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for our food. We thank you for our homes. We thank you for our health, Lord. Yes. And we thank you for our friends. And we thank you for all of those that are watching that took time out of our Friday night to spend with us, God. And we just pray that you just give them an extra blessing. Amen. And we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless each God and bless. every one of you. Good night. Good night.